Here's a neat algebra puzzle. We're given a symmetric relationship between three variables, A, B, and C, and we need to find the value of their product, A, B, C, such that values of A, B, and C are distinct. To solve this, we will break the chain of equalities into smaller, more manageable equations. This approach will help us see the underlying structure and make the problem easier to handle. A chain of three equal parts can be broken down into separate equations. Let's start with the first two parts. This gives us our first equation. We subtract b from both sides and subtract 1 over b from both sides to achieve this. The common denominator is b times c, giving us b minus c in the numerator. Let's hold on to this result. Now let's see what happens with the other pairs. A pattern is about to emerge. Taking the second and third parts of the original equality, we can apply the exact same logic. We group the variables b and c on one side and their reciprocals on the other. And combining the fractions gives us this second relationship. Finally, we do the same for the third and first parts of the original equality. We rearrange the terms just as before. And we get our third and final relationship. Notice that each equation was formed using the same process, always grouping the variables and their reciprocals and combining fractions in the same way. This highlights the symmetry in the problem. Before we continue, let's address an important point. What if two or more of the variables are equal? We need to be careful, because in our earlier steps, we divided by differences like a minus b, which would not be allowed if a and b were the same. Also, remember that none of the variables can be zero, since division by zero is not allowed. Let's test it. If a equals b, we can substitute a for eb in the first part of our original equation. The a terms cancel, showing that a must also equal c. This means if any two are equal, all three must be equal. In this case, ABC equals A cubed. But since A could be any non-zero number, the product would not have a single, unique value. The problem asks us to find ABC, strongly implying a unique answer. Therefore, we proceed with the assumption that A, B, and C must be distinct. Now let's put our three equations together and see the magic. Here are the three relationships we derived. Notice the beautiful, cyclic symmetry. Let's multiply the three left-hand sides together and the three right-hand sides together. Now we simplify. The numerators multiply together and the denominators multiply together. Let's simplify the denominator. We have two a's, two b's, and two c's which multiplies to a squared, b squared, c squared. This can be rewritten more neatly as the quantity a, b, c squared. Now for the magic. Since we know a, b, and c are distinct, this entire term is non-zero. That means we are allowed to divide both sides by it. Dividing both sides leaves us with this beautifully simple equation. One equals one over the square of a, b, c. We are just one step away from the answer. From here, we can solve for a BC. Multiplying both sides by ABC squared, we find that the square of the product is equal to 1. Taking the square root of both sides, we find that the product ABC can be either 1 or negative 1. So our algebra leads to two possible answers. Let's quickly check that both are actually possible with some concrete examples. First, let's check the case where ABC equals 1. We'll use the example values. A equals 1, B equals negative 1 half, and C equals negative 2. Let's check the first expression, a plus 1 over B. Substituting the values gives us 1 plus 1 over negative 1 half. 1 divided by negative 1 half is negative 2. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The first expression checks out. 
Next, for b plus 1 over c, we substitute to get negative 1 half plus 1 over negative 2, which is negative 1 half minus 1 half. This also equals negative 1. The second expression matches. Finally, for c plus 1 over a, we substitute to get negative 2 plus 1 over 1. This is clearly negative 1. All three parts are equal, so this case is valid. Now for the case where ABC equals negative 1. We'll use the example. A equals 2, B equals negative 1, and C equals 1 half. Now for our second example. Substituting into a plus 1 over B gives 2 plus 1 over negative 1, which simplifies to 2 minus 1. This equals 1. First expression is done. For b plus 1 over c, we get negative 1 plus 1 over 1 half. 1 divided by 1 half is 2. And negative 1 plus 2 is also 1. The second expression matches. Finally, c plus 1 over a is 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. The third expression also matches. Both cases are valid. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more math content.